Every project starts with it. It is a block of steel, a solid block of potential. Some of you see a hunk of metal, but I see a precision quick change tool holder waiting to be set free. After some sawing, of course. Luckily, we have the power hack saw so to convince this junk of steel to become a little bit more manageable. Remember, nothing says precision like starting with a piece of steel you've cut slightly crooked. And now obviously we need to square off the edges. Think of it like giving the steel a haircut, except instead of scissors we're using a mole and instead of hair, well, we're using high carbon steel. One side at a time we're turning chaos into order. So it's quite a boring process, unbelievably time consuming. It is such a pain in the neck uh, to stand there and watch this machine just chop off one slice at a time. And I really don't like this face mill. To be honest with you, I've got my eye on it, on a couple of different ones. I thought that this would give me a good surface finish. I thought that this was going to be like the face mill of my dreams but it ended up being more like the face mill of my nightmare so that being what it is i'm not satisfied with the surface finish and so but i'm still squaring up the stock so i'm kind of face milling the um, the faces and then end milling the ends or face milling the ends side milling the ends over here and getting myself uh, to a point where I have a piece of metal that I can work with. But boy oh boy is this time consuming. Do not think for one moment that you know it's just a walk in the park. It takes a little bit of a toll on you. And so fly cutting. It's the process that turns dull steel into a mirror that reflects your questionable life choices. <laughs> okay, now there's something about face uh, fly cutting that is magical about watching the caterpillar just glide across the surface leaving perfection in its wake it's 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 really it's cool to to watch especially in spread out footage like this i really love it it's part of one of the best operations that that you can do is to pretty up a piece of metal i believe changing it from just a hunk of steel to something that you can you can work with and the surface finish is important to me uh, so it was worth the time investing for me to not only use the face mill on this piece but also to get the fly cutter out and just tear off that, that very very thin layer that divides the line between okay and perfection and so now we have a beautiful looking piece of steel and it's time to get ready to rough out the pocket that we are going to use and to, to cut the, the dovetail in. and roughing out the pocket yeah, we, we obviously want to find the center of the block and so I go about using the center finder uh, to, to find that center and then we are going to use a 10 millimeter roughing end mold to just come in on center line and take a 5 millimeter depth of cut straight through that thing it is obviously the heavy lifting phase where the steel gets a proper workout and the end mill earns its paycheck uh, we we mill out the pocket to a precise diameter that uh, we can then use to to cut the 60 degree dovetail out of and then hopefully we don't mess up this dimension because this is a pretty critical dimension if you mess up here it is very very likely that you're going to have to scrap the pot and start all over again so we've got that first 
get the, that first five millimeters of material removed now we go in and we remove the second uh, five millimeters the total depth of that the pocket ended up being was 9.9 .9 millimeters so it's just a touch under 10 millimeters deep I'm sure that this rough in milk can, can do that in one pass but man oh man you know this is like the fourth time that I've ever used a roughing end mill and I just still find it quite nerve wracking to see that thing plow through steel as if it is nothing but it is fun and so then obviously uh, once the pocket was cleaned out uh, I used the dovetail cutter uh, to start off and just touching the edges there do one first pass very fine and uh, very light and the second pass as you can see there I went in quite like a three four millimeters just put it on really slow power feed and just watch the cut to do its thing you know a lot of the time I'm watching these tools and I'm thinking to myself man the moment that thing touches the steel it's gonna snap off and explode but my, my mind is blown all the time just watching these tools just cut through steel as if it is some sort of a you know plastic however the case might be high speed steel dovetail cutter did the, the job it's very critical dimension and you know it's, it's quite sensitive to adjustment uh, and so I measured twice and I put in a final cut to bring this dovetail to its final dimension I was quite pleased by the outcome uh, when I measured it the second time here to see that I was spot on like 0 0.04 or 0 0.05 out of out of what I was aiming for so I was quite happy with that and uh, just taking that block of, off of the mill and just fitting it onto the actual tool holder I find it fits in snug and tight and it it has zero play in it once it is locked in place I'm quite happy with what we've got thus far and looking forward to the operations to follow and so being very pleased with where we are with the project so far I'm going to move along and just set up the work piece in the vise on the mill once more uh, adding my parallels at the bottom um, it is interesting to note that I again opted for the 10 millimeter roughing end mill because I'm absolutely in love with it. I mean, just look at that thing. It just sends it, you know. It's like it's the tool of my dreams. This thing. Um, again, I will probably grow in my confidence so that one day I can also do a little bit of deeper depth of cut but at, at the moment this thing is just too expensive to gamble with you know so i'm trying my best to just kind of respect the cost of this tool by using it in a reasonable way and so i actually plunge in or oh, the total depth of cut there was again i think it was something like 11.95 millimeters just a touch under 12 and Bob's your uncle 12 millimeter slot is is in its place and we're ready to move on to drill those holes that man you know everything was going so smoothly until until we started drilling these holes obviously I'm finding the edges doing a little bit of edge finding so that I can know where to place the holes there is the, the tool height uh, screw that needs a hole and then there's four grub screws that needs a hole 
This is obviously me drilling or spot drilling the placement of each of those holes in no particular order. I just, you know, sort of decided where they needed to go and I recorded those values on the DRO and I started drilling the holes out. Now, obviously we did a spot drill and we're pilot drilling and then we are going to drill up incrementally through sizes. But as you will see, there is that moment a machinist fears where you just touch that tool down and the drill bit just explodes right there and you know what it's it's the moment every machinist fears some blame cheap tools others says it's bad luck i just prefer to blame it on mondays okay regardless of the actual day this was on a sunday i still blamed monday however the case might be i just you know I went about going into all of the drawers, finding a replacement drill bit, and I just continued on making holes. And obviously, this is something that you need to be patient with, and I ended up um, also tapping these holes at different sizes. So you will see the grub screws are 8mm, and the tool height screw is a 10 millimeter or a M10 tab and you will see that I actually put this into my Jacobs chuck which I know is bad practice and I understand that power tapping is not something that amateurs like me should ever venture into doing but hey you know what I felt real confident and so I just lowered the tap into the hole to the point where the tap started to cut that's when I stopped the mill and I just didn't have the cuts anymore so I removed the Jacob's chuck and uh, like a true baby I just went ahead with my cheap Timu uh, tap wrench I clamped it down and I just finished that tap by hand at least I now know that it is straight and that it is um, in line with the, with the mole and that it is square. I think that it is important to, to do. Obviously this is a time consuming process and we go about tapping these holes. The rest of them I power tapped because it's a through hole and not a blind hole. I felt confident that I can just kind of put the tap in the chuck and send it through this was a smaller hole smaller tap and therefore higher risk of it breaking off I understand and yes the comment section is probably gonna blow up but hey there it goes one two and three and can you imagine if the tap broke on the fourth hole I had an entire internal conversation with myself just praying that it doesn't break but we ended up making it work so I was very happy to get the project to this point where all the slots have been milled all the dovetails have been milled all the holes have been drilled and all of them have been tapped so I just ended up feeling quite lucky and so I finished off with chamfering each hole just lightly touching it off and bringing that operation also to a full circle end and that's where we are that right there is basically a completed tool holder okay so we are at the point in this project where we can start to button up the final couple of things to do starting off with adding the tool height adjustment screw or bolt whatever you want to call it you will see me adding a little bit of, of Loctite which is a machinist's version of duct tape to the bolt and then I'm threading it into the hole making sure that I spread it evenly but you will see me reaching over for the wrench just to tie or just to bolt it down so that 
that bolt bottoms out in the hole and uh, after after making sure that it is snug I uh, wipe off the excess Loctite to make sure that you know it doesn't go into any of the other threaded holes as I then start to add the grub screws in the M8 holes purpose here is just to make sure that all of the threads are properly formed and that those grub screws can pass through freely now as you all would have noticed there is a very big thing that we need to cut off which is the bolt head I removed the bolt head using a simple angle grinder and then I started my way over to the cut of power saw so that we can get a piece of scrap brass prepped for the lathe I felt fancy in that I wanted to make the adjustment nut of out of brass so I went over to the lathe I chucked it up and I started uh, cutting it down to size when I was roughly in the vicinity of the correct diameter I started drilling the center hole and I followed up with incrementally increasing the drill sizes up to the point where I tapped it M10 thereafter I final I, I went to put a knurl a knurl is a weird thing for a South African accent to try and achieve okay because we have a tendency to want to pronounce the K and the K is meant to be silent so but there's I don't know if I have some sort of an OCD problem but I keep on wanting to say knurl because that is how you pronounce it I knurled this piece of brass okay I knurled it very prettily it was beautifully done and I was very proud of that knurl because knurling is a science on all on its own after I have managed to achieve this life-changing event of knurling that thing beautifully I went ahead and I started to pot off the actual nut and oh, obviously halfway through knurling or uh, parting it off I went in back with a with a chamfering tool just to make sure that we uh, chamfer the inside of that edge also make it pretty so that it can bling bling okay and then after doing that I went ahead and I finished parting off the, the actual nut and I was very proud of this knurl man I'm telling you brass is such an, a wonderful material to work with I would have loved you know I love all of its properties and that my dear people brings this project to a full and final close out thank you for joining me on this journey and if you enjoyed watching please subscribe for more zen machining moments occasional disasters and lots of chips see you in the next one